Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, today we will continue uh, solving uh, relatively simple trigonometric problems. Um, still, it's not exactly like exercise on knowing the theory, um, but uh, it, yeah, they do require certain ingenuity, but really not a lot. So just one little push and, and you will get to a solution. Um, now, this course is presented at unizor.com. The name of this course is Mass Plus and Problems. There is a prerequisite course called Mass for Teens uh, on the same website. All the courses are totally free, no advertisement, no strings attached, even sign-in is optional. Uh, the name of this lecture is Trigonometry 06 in this course, Mass Plus and Problems. Also, you might find interesting on the same website, Physics for Teens and uh, Relativity for All. Okay, um, so solving problems is probably one of the most important purposes of all these courses. I just could not present a problem without the theory. So first you have to know about what trigonometry, trigonometry is all about and then solve the problem. So that's why there is a course called Math for Teens. Uh, which is basically for high school and maybe a little bit higher. And uh, then I have mass plus and problems. Okay, so let's just solve these few problems in trigonometry. Um, okay, let's assume that angles alpha, beta, and gamma all are angles in some um, triangle. something like alpha, beta, and gamma. Now, what I have to prove is that cosine of alpha plus cosine cosine of beta plus cosine of gamma less than equal to 3 seconds. Okay. Well, I mean, obviously, we know that trigonometry, trigonometric functions sine and cosine are between minus 1 and plus 1. So, definitely, sum of three cosines will be less than 3. I would like to have it a little bit more strict. It's less than 3 half. If the angles are related by this condition, that they all belong to one triangle. Well, obviously, if it says they belong to one triangle, it means that the sum of these angles is equal to pi, which is 180 degrees. So we know the theorem from the geometry. So sum of these angles is always equal to 180 degrees or pi in radians. Okay, so this is the condition alpha plus beta plus gamma is e equals to pi and this is something which we have to prove the sum of their cosines is less or equal to 3 seconds okay so at this particular point you obviously need some uh, ingenuity <laughs> well one simple thing is that alpha plus beta is equal to pi minus gamma that might actually help to reduce the number of variables from 3 to 2. If instead of gamma you will put alpha plus beta minus pi, uh, or pi minus alpha mi minus beta, and somehow open this cosine of the um, sum or difference between angles. I would like actually to do it slightly differently. I would like to cosine plus cosine somehow, somehow um, express in terms of alpha plus beta and then replace it with pi minus gamma and I will have only one variable gamma okay how can I do it well in this particular case and this is the piece which uh, kind of requires some ingenuity I would like to convert the sum of these two cosines into product of trigonometric functions now, I do not remember, quite frankly, all these uh, uh, identities, trigonometric, 
what I do remember is what is the sum, uh, the angle, uh, the su sine of sum of angles and cosine of sum of angles. So like sine of alpha plus beta and cosine of alpha, al alpha plus beta. Uh, that I do remember. And I also remember how to, basically the way how to convert sum of cosines or sum of any two, fun two, two trigonometric functions into product. Here it is. Now, I know that um, angle alpha can be represented as alpha plus beta plus alpha minus beta over 2, right? So it would be alpha over 2 plus alpha over 2, which is alpha, beta over 2 minus beta over 2, which is 0. So this is correct, okay? And beta can be represented as alpha plus beta over 2 minus alpha minus beta over 2. Alpha will cancel out, and beta would be minus and minus would be plus, plus would be. From this, I will do this cosine of alpha is equal to. And now I will use the formula which I do remember. Cosine of sum of two angles is cosine times cosine minus sine times sine. So that would be cosine alpha plus beta times cosine alpha minus beta minus sine of alpha plus beta and the sine of alpha minus beta. Now cosine beta is equal to, this is the cosine of difference of two angles, so that would be plus here. So it would be the same cosine alpha plus beta over 2 cosine alpha minus beta over 2 plus sum. And if I will add them together, cosine plus cosine, this one. This thing would cancel out, and I will have that instead of cosine plus cosine, I can put 2 cosine alpha plus beta times cosine alpha minus beta. So this is this piece. plus cosine gamma. So this is equivalent to whatever I have on the left side. Now immediately I know that this thing is less than 1 or equal to 1, right? Because it's a cosine. So I immediately can put that this is less than 2 cosine alpha plus beta over 2. Without this, plus cosine gamma. So. I immediately establish that the expression on the left is less or equal to this. And as you see now, everything is in terms of alpha plus beta or gamma, and alpha plus beta can be expressed as gamma. So I will have equal to 2 cosine of alpha plus beta papalam uh, over 2 papalam. So it's pi over 2 minus gamma over 2, right? Plus cosine gamma. Now, here is something which I can express as sine of gamma over 2, right? Cosine of pi minus 2, it's like a right triangle. Sum of alpha and beta is pi over 2. Sine of this is equal to cosine of this. <coughs> Plus cosine of gamma, since this is gamma over 2, I will probably have to express this as a function of gamma over 2. Um, now, the uh, the, the, the same formula, gamma is equal to gamma over 2 plus gamma over 2. So it's cosine cosine, which is cosine square, minus sine of sine, which is sine square. But the cosine can be expressed as 1 minus sine square. Cosine square can be expressed as 1 minus sine square. So that would be, uh, what, 1 minus 2 sine square of gamma over 2. Okay, so I have established that this expression, sum of cosines, 
is less than or equal to this. Now, this E is kind of a polynomial of sine of gamma. So I can put um, minus 2z squared plus 2z plus 1, where z is sine of gamma over 2. Now, this is some kind of a polynomial as a function of z. Well, z is basically a sine of some angle, which can be between one, minus 1 and 1, can be anything. Now, but what's important is, you see, this is minus, which means that the graph of this is a parabola which is directed with its horns down, and it has a maximum. That would be something like this. So, question is, what is this maximum? If this maximum is not equal to, I mean, less than or equal to 3 seconds, then I'm fine. And indeed, well, what I can definitely know that this is between this and this. I do not remember again the formula for the maximum, but I do remember the formula for roots. It's uh, if you have expression like ax squared plus bx plus c, then roots are minus b over 2a plus minus some radical. So since I need the middle point, I have to basically have middle between left and right roots. So if I will add plus to minus, uh, it will uh, cancel out. I will have midpoint as minus b over 2a. Uh, so minus b, which is minus 2, divided by 2a, which is minus 2 times 2 minus 4. So it's 1 half. So midpoint is at 1 half. And what's the value of my polynomial at 1 half? This is 1 quarter minus 1 half plus 2 times 1 half plus 1 plus 1. So it's minus 1 half plus 1 plus 1. So it's 2 minus 1 half, which is 3 seconds, exactly. So this polynomial has a maximum of 3 seconds. No matter what's the value of sine of gamma over 2 is. And that proves the whole thing, the whole uh, inequality. Okay, so that's problem number one. Now, obviously, I didn't really say it in the very beginning, but I think I'm talking about this in every lecture related to problems. Try to solve these problems yourself. Um, immediately after it, I present the problem, pause the video if you watch it on the video, and uh, try to solve it yourself. Or alternatively, you can go to unisor.com, you can go to this course, Mass Plus and Problems, and uh, if you will choose this lecture, you will have both video and textual presentation of the same thing. And in this case, the full solution is presented. Um, so again, you read the condition of the problem and then solve it yourself. Don't look into um, the solution itself. Sometimes I present the hints, not a solution, just a hint. Sometimes don't at all. Sometimes the, it's a very easy problem and I don't really put in writing the solution. But I will solve it here. Okay, let's assume you have a set of angles which are all acute angles well let's just take this out so they're really acute angles so they are basically sequenced um, in uh, ascending order these angles and they all belong to the interval from 0 to pi over 2 to 90 degrees now, what I have to do is, I have to prove the following inequality. Tangent of alpha 1 may less or equal to sine of alpha 1 plus sine of alpha 2 plus etc. 
plus sine of alpha n divided by sum of cosines alpha 1, alpha 2, cosine alpha n. And it's alpha n. So that's what I have to prove. Again, this is easy problem, so it definitely makes sense to, to pause the video and, and solve it yourself. Now, here's how, how, how I approach it. Now, remember the graph of sine. Sine is something like this. This is pi over 2. Cosine is, so this is sine, and this is cosine. So sine is increasing, cosine is decreasing. Okay. Now, if sine is increasing, then if angles are increasing, the signs are also are, are increasing. So in the numerator, these values are basically in ascending order. And I can definitely say that n times sine of alpha first mm, less than or equal to sine of alpha first plus sine of alpha two plus etc plus sine of alpha n and n times sine alpha n. Since sine of alpha n is the biggest among them and sine of alpha one is the smallest of uh, 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 one of them, then n times the smallest is less than sum and the sum is less than n times the maximum of them. Great. So that's the numerator. How about the denominator? Now cosine is decreasing. So this is in decreasing order. So what I can say that this is the smallest and this is the biggest, which means n times cosine alpha n is less than sum of cosines. Cosine alpha n and that's less than n times cosine alpha first. So alpha n is the biggest, but cosine of alpha n is the smallest because it's a decreasing function. And alpha 1 is the, the minimum of those alphas, so cosine of alpha 1 is the maximum of them. So that's why it's true. All right, great. Now, what does it mean? What is this tangent of alpha 1? Tangent the alpha, alpha 1 is, well, n times sine of alpha 1 divided by n times cosine of alpha 1, right? Because n and n is uh, um, cancelling out. Now, this is the smallest. This is the smaller than. And this is the biggest. So the n numerator is the smallest, the sm smaller of this sum, and denominator is bigger than this sum. So this is definitely less than sine of alpha 1 plus etc. plus sine of alpha n divided by cosine of alpha 1 plus etc. plus cosine of alpha n. So again, this is smaller than this this is bigger than this so we are decreasing numerator and <coughs> increasing denominator that's why the whole thing would be smaller than this analogously tangent of alpha n i can put it as n sine of alpha n divided by n cosine of alpha n now this is bigger than this and this is the smallest among them. That's why, again, that would be greater than sigma of sine divided by sigma of cosine of alpha i, i from 1 to n, i from 1 to n. So that's the proof, just replaced with the smallest and the biggest, and we got these two uh, inequalities. That's easy, right? Okay.
Now the third one involves some calculations, but it's straightforward. Okay, so I basically have to solve the equation sine of ax plus sine of bx equals to zero, where a and b are some real numbers. All right, since it's zero, the best thing is obviously to convert it into product. If you convert it into product, then um, equating each component uh, to zero will give you a solution, right? How to convert to product? Well, exactly the same thing. So A is equal to A plus B, B over 2 plus A minus B over 2. And B is A plus B over 2 minus A minus B over 2. So sine of A x is equal to uh, instead of a x, I have a uh, plus b over two uh, times x and a uh, minus b. So it's a sign of sum that would be sign of the first a plus b upon x times cosine second a minus b over two x plus cosine sum plus cosine a plus b to x times sine a minus b over 2x. Now, sine of bx is equal to... Now, this is a difference between two angles, so it's a sine cosine minus cosine sine. So, it would be sine a plus b over 2x times cosine a plus b and yeah, nine minus sorry b mm, minus in this case minus cosine times sine and this thing will cancel out if I will add them together so sine of ax plus sine bx is equal to 2 sine a plus b over 2x times cosine a minus b over x time, 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 over 2 times x and this is supposed to be equal to 0, right? now that's easy it's either this is equal to 0 or this is equal to 0 both gives you different solutions now, when sine is equal to zero, when angle is, equ is equal to 180 degrees times any number, times pi times n. So a plus b over 2 times x is equal to pi times n, where n is any integer number. It can be zero, it can be one, it can be minus one, etc. In all these cases, uh, this angle gives you sine of this angle gives you zero from which x is equal to 2 pi n divided by a plus b okay now obviously if a plus b not equal to zero um, which means that in this particular case if a is equal to minus b it's like sine x plus sine minus x sine is a uh, odd function so sine of minus um, x would be minus sine of x so it would be basically sine x minus sine x is equal to zero which means any solution would, would, would fit so if a plus b not equal to zero then this is a solution if a plus b equal to zero so the any x would be a solution now, another set of solutions would be when a minus b divided by 2 times x, cosine is equal to pi over 2 plus pi n. Right? We have to shift by pi over 2. Remember, sine has this graph. So it's 0, it's pi, it's minus pi. 
So it's pi times any number. Cosine has this same thing, but shifted by pi over 2. So it's pi over 2 plus the same pi times n, from which x is equal to 2 times, so it's uh, pi plus 2 pi n divided by a minus p. Again, if a not equal to b. If a is equal to b, I will have sine of ax basically times 2. So it's this is 0, so it's sine of ax is equal to 0. And uh, uh, I will have basically all these um, solutions when sine is equal to 0, if a is equal to b. That's a different kind of things, but that's a trivial case. So let's not consider a plus b or a uh, equal to zero or a minus b equal to zero, in which case um, the equation would be very kind of simple. But uh, for this and this not equal to zero denominators, this is a set of solutions and this is a set of solutions, basically. Um, but um, yeah, basically that's it. All right, so what I do recommend you to do right now is go to the unizor.com, go to the course Mass Plus and Problems lecture, Trigonometry 06. You will have all the problems there. Uh, I think uh, in a couple of cases I do have solutions. Uh, in, in one case I don't have a solution presented in writing. But read the condition of the problem and try to solve it yourself. If I have a hint, use the hint. If I don't have a hint, don't use a hint. But in any case, it's very important for you to again do exactly the same as I did during the lecture. Do it for yourself. Just have a piece of paper and, uh, and uh, basically solve it yourself. Because right now, you definitely are equipped to do this type of things. And it's very important to repeat something like you will, you will be next time you will be more comfortable with this. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much and good luck.